Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show, highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyle, community, and neighborhood. And now, from Four Properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the talk show, All Things Moore County. Dorothy, we have a uh, very unusual and a very special show today. I noticed. Um, it's going to be, well, we are going to, at the top of the show, we are going to be featuring um, a very well-known uh, former athlete and successful business person, and many people in Moore County will know him when I say Fran Tarkenton. Ooh, neat. Fran was um, an NFL Hall of Famer. He was a college Hall of Famer. He was, in many ways, a counterculture athlete in the 70s and the 60s when he was starting planning for the future mm-hmm. at a time when he was at the pinnacle of his um, uh, his professional career. Um, he has reinvented himself many times over the years, and um, I think his grit and his determination um, is a great example for a lot of people, and um, he's still going strong. We're going to be speaking with his business partner today, Amilda Kaufman, uh, from Legal Shield, and she's going to be talking a lot about Legal Shield, but also, more importantly, um, a tie-in to um, what Legal Shield is going to be doing with the pet overpopulation here, um, trying to pay it forward. So we're going to cover a lot of themes. But let's start and let's um, let's get Fran. He's calling in, and we want to um, uh, start a conversation with him. Can you hear me? Fran, are you there? I guess he's not here yet, but we hope he will be. Hey, Fran, you there? I'm right here. Okay. Bye. Fran, good morning. This is Bill Sahadi at All Things Moore County. How are you? I'm good, Bill. Where are you? Uh, where's your station? Uh, our station is in Moore County in uh, near the Pinehurst area. As a golfer, I'm sure you're very familiar with Pinehurst. Um, we um, we have Amilda Kaufman with us today. We're going to be talking um, a lot about Legal Shield, but we have um, briefly introduced you before the conversation. Before I, before I even start, I have to tell you, one of my top real estate brokers graduated from the University of Georgia in 1988, and when he heard that we were going to be speaking with you, he asked me to ask you a question. Okay. Are you going to be at the Notre Dame game on September the 9th. Uh, he's driving. He's going to drive to Chicago. And uh, he said, if if he's going to be there, I need to know. I am not going to be there. Uh-oh. <laughs> you, um, you set a tone in Athens. You set a tone in the NFL. You've set a tone. Um, and we described you sort of as a counterculture athlete um, who... You started reinventing yourself while you were still in the midst of your professional career, and that seems to have continued to go on decade after decade. Well, I started way before that. I I had a paper route in Washington, D.C., in the inner city, uh, uh, when I was seven years old. Uh, when <laughs> I moved to Athens, Georgia, where I later went to the University of Georgia, uh, I worked on chicken farms in the summer to make some money. And when I went to the University of Georgia, I sold insurance for the Franklin Life Insurance Company uh, while I was at Georgia. Now, I go to pro football, my first salary was $12,500. Wow. My off-seasons, which was January to August, I always got a job. Right. I worked for a trucking firm up in Minneapolis. I worked for the Coca-Cola Company. And then and then uh, when I was 26 years old, I started my own companies, and I've built technology companies, insurance companies, all types of companies. I've started 20 different companies, so I've been a, if you will, a serial entrepreneur. Right. And the way you understand how to be a quarterback is you got to have a background, you got to play it. To be an entrepreneur, you've got to go do it. So I've, I've been an entrepreneur pretty much my entire life. Yeah. Um, you, you always, your career was always marked by um, by grit, by determination, um, maybe a little bit by being the underdog, but it always seemed like you tried to run the race twice as fast and twice as hard as everybody else. I, I would like to think I did. I would like to think I prepared 
uh, as, as hard or better than anybody. Yeah. I wasn't physically imposing. I was six foot tall. Yeah. I was 180 pounds. Uh, most of the people were bigger, faster, stronger. Yeah. Uh, in order for me to play, I had to, I thought, put more work in, understand the game, understand how to make it work and how to, how to be a real field general and a real leader and how to get my teammates involved and, and because football is the ultimate team game. I mean, as great as Tom Brady is and Peyton Manning has been, they've had great teams and great coaches and, uh, to, to be able to make that happen. And businesses are no different. Whether I'm an entrepreneur, I've got to have great people around me. I've got to have great partners around me. And if I don't have that, I'm limited in how I can grow my business. Yeah. The, um, the scrambling that you were so well known for in your athletic career, um, is also something that's indigenous to entrepreneurs, the ability to scramble. Well, the ability to change course. Yeah. The ability to stay ahead of the game. Right. I, I think we see it in, in, in business today. We see two, two different things going on. We see in the technology sector, the Apples and the Googles and the Amazons are just doing amazing things technology-wise. Uh, Tesla uh, with what they're doing. Then you look at the the the, the old line companies, the automobile companies, General Motors, Ford are struggling. The Coca Cola's struggling. Shopping centers are struggling because they haven't they haven't been innovative and creative. And here's the lesson for your listeners: there, I don't care what size business you're in, entrepreneur, uh, you, you're 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 one person person uh, company, or you've got five employees, or you got a thousand employees. You got to reinvent yourself every day. You got to push that envelope. You got to leverage technology. You got to have good ideas and make sure that you have products and services that your customers really need and can make them better. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's, that's what I've been, I was as a football player. I was the first quarterback to be called a scramble. I was the first quarterback to run as much as I threw. And so when I finished my career in football, I set all the records for passing yards, and I set all the records for rushing yards of a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Not because I was so physically endowed. I pushed the envelope and leveraged ideas and mentoring and coaching. I had great coaches, and I was coachable to be able to put these things in place. Tell me, um, you mentioned um, your first job as a paper boy at seven years old. I can identify with that. I shined shoes and delivered papers. Tell me about your parents. Well, I, you know, my, my father was a preacher man, and back in those days, uh, you know, the preachers weren't rock stars, and my dad was a Pentecostal evangelical preacher, and uh-huh. I, I think uh, he might have made $40 a week. Uh, so so we had, uh, uh, if we were going to be able to have something ourselves and, and help our family out, you got a, you got a job, and I had an older brother. He had a paper route. We just put all the money in the in the family pot. And, but it was a great f- foundation for us. Mm-hmm. Take responsibility at such a young age, and I never forgot it. Yeah. And at my age today, and I and the last time I checked, I was seventy seven, and I haven't slowed down and I haven't stopped. Wow. Here is the key. Here is the key. If you're listening, you've got to be coachable. You've got to understand that you don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers at my age, with all of my experience. I am learning every day. I am reinventing myself every day. And I'm more focused every day on making sure that I can help my customers, my prospects, solve problems. Yeah, we don't live in a cradle-to-grave society anymore like we might have in the 50s and the 60s and even the 70s. Um, And being able to reinvent yourself every day is so key for so many people because careers and jobs change so quickly. Yeah, they do, and, and, and the need. but it's exciting. And this is the most exciting time I've ever I've ever seen. And here, here we can leverage technology uh, like we've never been able to leverage it before. Mm-hmm. We can we can get information. I can take my my mobile devices and I've got them sitting right here at my desk, and I don't have to wait for the newspaper tomorrow. I can go <laughs> there and I get the latest news, the latest ideas, uh, and and I, I do it quickly. I can get. Great content by video. Mm-hmm. You put out great content by video. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of having an openness to learning, to getting smarter, to getting better. 
and, and that's what all successful people do. I've never known, from Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, to Stephen Jobs, who's a good friend of mine, the founder of Apple, and I could go on and on. These people never, ever thought they had all the answers. Mm -hmm. They were searching all the time great role models for us. Yeah. How do you find time to um, to follow your passion playing golf? Uh, well, uh, well, my passion is, is is life. Yeah. My passion is everybody that I meet. Yeah. My passion is everything that I do. I, uh, you know, I just got back from Pebble Beach. My wife and I, uh, we play golf together. We play the great golf courses of the world. And we were out in Pebble Beach and played uh, Pe uh, Pebble Beach for 10 days. And it's one of my favorite courses to play. I've been there in your in your part of the world and mm -hmm. played the courses around uh, around your area there often. I uh, played the Gusta. I've had a hole-in-one at the Augusta National Club, the, the home of the Masters. No kidding. Number 16, I had a hole-in-one uh, back about 40 years ago. Wow. And so I, you know, we, we, uh, we, but I work and think while I play golf. And I enjoy following football. I'm a, I'm a Georgia Bulldog. I'm a Minnesota Viking. And I hear the college season's coming up and yeah. pro season's coming up. I get excited about that. And now with television, we can see all the games coming on direct TV. It's crazy. It's just pretty great. And so I stay connected to the to the NFL, to college football. One of my best friends has a lake house in Lake Burton. His name is Nick Saban. Oh, yeah. And Nick Saban is arguably the greatest college coach in the history of the world. Yeah. And so we play golf together. We break bread together. We share ideas. And, and the greatness of life is you got to put yourself out there to ask a lot of questions of people that uh, that can uh, that can keep us fresh and can give us new ideas. And I I love doing that, whether it's on the golf course, uh, you know, uh, playing the golf with Dick Saban, or or, or, or being with uh, uh, Peggy Sue and Billy Bob. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, I have to ask you. Just let me roll back a couple of years. Um, you did have a great career, and you're in the minds of a lot of people, who were, um, what were some of your most memorable moments from your playing career? Oh, but my most, you know, in Georgia, in the 50s, Georgia didn't win anything, and so uh -huh. we won in 1959. Our group came in there. Pat Dye, the former coach at Auburn, was on our team, and we uh, we won the SEC championship, which was unheard of then, because yeah. Ole Miss and LSU were the big teams, and we went to the Orange Bowl. And we won the Orange Bowl back in those days. There were about five bowls. When I went into pro football, I, uh, my first game, we were an expansion team. No expansion team had ever won a game in their first season. Mm -hmm. And we were an expansion t team in Minnesota in 61. And we not only won our first game, but we played against the oldest, most successful team in football, the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. The coach was George Hallis. George Hallis was also their general manager and, 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 and their owner of the franchise. And George Hallis was the founder of the National Football League. And in our first game, we were 28-point underdogs. We beat them 37-13. Mm -hmm. And I was 21 years old. And I I completed 17 of 21 passes for 237 yards. I threw for four touchdowns and ran for another. I don't remember a lot, of it, but, it, but it was a great moment. I played in three of the first 11 Super Bowls. I, uh, you know, that was, That's right. that was all I was eligible to play in because we didn't have Super Bowls in my early years. That's right. And we won six straight, uh, division titles in the old black and blue division. Right. Uh, with the Vikings and the, and the Packers and the Bears and the Lions. So, right. These were all great highlights for me and, yeah. and, uh, and, and I played 18 years in the National Football League and yeah. four years in college and four years at my high school, which we won the, state championship uh, uh, in high school, so it was great that we were had a lot of success, and you know, along the way, you also get knocked down, and you have a lot of defeats, and you learn from the defeats. Right. Um, what do you think today, kids today? Um, well, I think the athletes are better than they've ever been. I, I, I think they're better conditioned, uh, they prepare more, yeah. they train year-round. Yeah. I think they're just exceptional athletes. I think the coaches are more knowledgeable today than ever before. Uh, I think the game is, is because of all that, 
It's gotten faster. I think it's gotten more interesting. Mm-hmm. It's become more of a passing game, a wide open, very fast game. And, and of course, uh, the American public loves it. I think the most popular thing that we have in sport are the NFL and college football. Yeah. Outside the realm of um, athletics, you sound to me like you could be a motivational speaker for a lot of the youth today growing up. Well, I did that for a lot of years. I I would do as many as 100 to 125 talks a year. But now, you know, here's technology again. I, I don't like getting on airplanes and, and riding all over the country. Yeah. But now we've been able to build a state-of-the-art television studio right here. And we stream out the video. We can stream it out... HD TV quality, we can stream it out to all over the world. So we do that, and we do a lot of of training of, of people that are starting businesses, uh, that are running businesses, to be able to give them access to the latest thinking, to challenge them in what they're doing and how they're thinking, to be able to be their mentor. So we are mentors uh, to just hundreds of thousands of startup small businesses and small businesses all over the world. Yeah. Um, let's uh, talk a little bit. You're being joined today by your business partner here in Moore County, uh, Miss Amilda Kaufman. The um, great Amilda Kaufman. Yeah. What, what are you guys working on together? Um, I've never you, known. I've known her for years and years and years. Yeah. Um, tell me, because we're going to talk a little bit about your um, uh, what you guys are doing together. Yes. Uh, well, what we've done for the last 20 years uh, I partnered with uh, Legal Shield, yep. uh, and my company is uh, GoSmallBiz.com, and we have gone out and built products where we give small business entrepreneurs access to top A-rated lawyers in their state across the country and Canada, uh-huh. and we give them access to all the business help from how to start your business, how to incorporate your business how to build a digital presence, uh, how to market. And then in that program, I go out and give them a mentoring session on, online that they can pick up online every month. So we, 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 we bring to that entrepreneur access to the best thinking. So we kind of say, Emil, you know, we, we protect your business because most small businesses cannot afford Three hundred dollar an hour lawyers, right? And our lawyers are A rated lawyers. They have unlimited access at a very low cost. And then we give them, we protect their businesses, and then we give them access to what we do at Go Small Biz, and we constantly coach them and mentor them and help them be able to go and get into new markets and new partnerships, and we show them how to make their business from a sales standpoint, work. Mm -hmm. And we have done that now for 20 years, and we've gotten so much better now because we can do it online. And so they can pick our information up on their mobile devices every day, Mm -hmm. and so we can connect with them every day. We don't have to wait to, you know, have a convention or something. We People need to be coached every day. Right. Football players are coached every day. We coach our... Our customers every day. Sounds to me like it's also another way to um, give the entrepreneur a leg up or at least put them on a level playing field oh, with some of them, the largest competitors. Give them, uh, uh, if you want to look, we give them uh, Nick Saban type coaching for small business. Yes, we give them a leg up. We give them something that we could not give them 20 years ago. Yeah. We can give them now. And so we make them smarter and we give them more ideas and we give them more systems of how they can, the most important thing, how they can grow their business and how they can and, and how they can get more customers. So the partnership of, of my company, Go Small Biz and Legal Shield, you give them the best moment. They need a lawyer. They need access to lawyers. We give them access, unlimited access to lawyers, unlimited access to our business mentoring and our systems, and we do it for one low price. Yeah. Um, it has been great uh, talking with you. Um, it, you, I have a lot of respect for people that continue to reinvent themselves, and um, uh, you, you have a very strong presence, and um, you sound like you're 27, not 77. Well, uh, you know, they say that the, 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 the new 77 is like the 47, so I don't know. I just know I love what I do, 
because here's the mission of life for all your people out there. The mission of life is to help people. Yeah. And and, and right. people want to live the American dream. And I don't care if they're working in a, in a company now. Many of them are starting a business part-time. Yeah. They need the best help and the best counsel and the best coaching. We give them that. Yeah, if you can serve other people, you indirectly help to serve yourself. But it's all about serving others, isn't it? It really is. You've got it right there, Bill. Fran, thanks so much for joining us. It was My a pleasure. Ple- Have it a was great a- day. Hope we see you at Pinehurst Number 2 here sometime soon. I hope so, too. Thanks, Fran. Bye-bye. That was Fran Tarkenton. Um, we're going to come back in the second set. This is All Things More County, and we're going to be um, speaking with Fran's partner, Emilda Kaufman, uh, all about legal aid and um, what she's doing um, to pay it forward. We'll be right back. In the middle of- Welcome back to All Things Moore County. Um, Fran Tarkenton uh, was our guest. Um, Amilda, your partner, he's um, he's something else, huh? Yes, he is. He's been a joy. He's been a joy to know, and uh, yeah. just absolutely love his inspiration. How did the two of you meet? How did you hook up? Well, actually, I grew up around the corner from Fran in Atlanta. In Athens? Oh. <laughs> no, in Atlanta. In Atlanta. Yes, yes. And then uh, we became good friends through Legal Shield. Okay. And uh, when he came on board with Legal Shield with his business of GoSmallBiz.com. Okay. How did you get to Moore County? Oh, gosh, too li- too much to say in too little of a time. Um, so many things. Yep. Um, being from Atlanta, I'm a southerner. Right. And I ended up in Ohio with my husband, Jay Kaufman, and decided Ohio was just a touch too cold for me. And right. I had to come back south. And we fell in love with the area because he's a golfer also. Uh-huh. And so Pinehurst, Pinehurst drew him. And then, of course, Southern Pines drew me, being horse country. Equestrian. Uh-huh. And when we walked the streets of Southern Pines, we saw animals everywhere and everybody walking their dogs and and realized what an animal place this was and we saw all the rescue posters on the retail stores and just fell in love with so many things about moore county there are two um there are two stories that you have to tell today obviously one is a legal shield and we want to talk a little bit more in depth about it fran gave us some big picture overviews but it's also your affinity for animals and your affinity for the area, um, the two are, are tied in together. But let's start with Legal Shield. Um, you've been with um, them for 22 years. <laughs> yes. And as Fran said, you know, everything can be done remotely and everything can be done with the mobile devices. You don't have to physically be in the same town or the same county to communicate, to uh, face, you know, go on Facebook or Skype. Um, so you're in constant communication. It's as if you live right next door. Oh, absolutely. And uh, the technology is fantastic. In fact, I still take care and service uh, some of my accounts in, that are still in Ohio, and I have national accounts right. that I still service employees that are in California, New York, and, and Florida, and help businesses all over the country. And right now I'm focused on what I can give back to Moore County. Um, can you give me... Um Kind of like a Cliff Notes version of Legal Shield. Fran touched on working with entrepreneurs and small businesses, but Legal Shield is a a blanket service for individuals as, yes. w- as well. Yes. Just um, just for the layman who maybe has never heard of Legal Shield. Okay. Well, I'll start with the uh, small business program for entrepreneurs that Fran was uh, touching on. We have a <clears throat> excuse me a small business legal plan. That's for that business owner that's getting started or or maybe they've been in business for a long time and just 
haven't been able to slow down long enough to hire that HR person or put together that uh, employee handbook or get the uh, website started and they need, you know, consultation of how to grow their business, how to hire and protect their employees, mm-hmm. how to make better business decisions. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have a collection issue that they need help with. There's so many legalities as well running a business of any size. And we work with companies that have employees up to a 100 on our small business plan, as well as the company that has no employees. And so that's why it's important for me to meet with your listeners and sit down and learn what their needs are so that I can help them. And it's all about helping their business grow. So I do need to meet with them so we can find out what we can do to massage and make life easier as they grow their business and become more profitable. Then we also have legal services for the individual Mm -hmm. that can be offered to the employees as well. And that, in a nutshell, basically gives access to top attorneys, once again, anywhere in the United States, anything they need uh, at 100% or discounted rate. They get unlimited phone calls. They get their contracts reviewed. We even help with separation and divorce. Um, We do their wills, living wills, all sorts of things that people would normally not call an attorney for because we know how expensive they are. Or maybe they don't want to bother their, you know, Uncle Bob that's the attorney because maybe they don't want them to know some of those things. And now they'll have access to top attorneys for a small fee a month, and they can call as much as they want and have that peace of mind and get those things done and become a more productive employee. We also have another product called ID Shield. Right which is the most comprehensive identity theft plan in America today. It is uh, backed by Kroll, and Kroll is the world's leader in for forensic investigation and security. And it, again, like I said, is the most comprehensive identity theft protection plan, and we all know identity theft is sweeping and mm-hmm. touching every family. It and is. it's not about just banks and credit cards and things like that. It's about your children's identity. It's about your medical records. It's mm-hmm. about your employment records. It's about your tax returns. And this is a, a fantastic plan for the individual. So people can get this as individuals. Yeah, the identity theft um, issue is a, almost a subject for a separate show. Um, it's that involved, and it does it encompasses. We live in an area with um, a lot of military personnel, and you just mentioned something about um, their children's identity, and many of them are um, they kind of fly under the radar, so to speak, and they want to mm-hmm. as well as their children. Mm-hmm. Um, but as our world is exploding um, through technology, we're all more exposed. It's like having a scab and standing in a stiff wind and without a Band-Aid. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds to me like, um, just from listening to you, Legal Shield is a, you're, you're part efficiency expert, um, consulting, consultants. Um, you offer... Uh, Mentoring and coaching through videos um, to assist small business, mm-hmm. um, and probably at a, a a group insurance type rate, as mm-hmm. opposed because mm-hmm. if you can pool a lot of people uh, do, providing a service, it should bring the cost uh, down. That's exactly right. And we do have discounted rates for employers. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, the individual who gets it through their employer okay. gets our services at a discounted rate, just like insurance products are. And uh, you mentioned the vulnerability and the technology regarding identity theft, and, uh, and I'll touch on that. Um, this plan also monitors the black market chat rooms. Um, so, you know, a lot of our information, whether it's our birth date, our address, um, our medical information, all of that stuff is bought and sold on chat rooms. And this ID Shield actually monitors those chat rooms looking for your birth date once you become a member. Is that right? Yes. I did, I did not know that. It's crazy. <laughs> do, you, do you know, I have to tell you, I, um, I was born in the 50s. I'm doing the best I can to adjust to today. <laughs> with you. I have a sheet in my computer. Honestly, just trying to keep up with all my Your passwords, passwords. <laughs> is driving me crazy. Every time I have to sign into something, 
I, my brain freezes. I have to refer to this. There has to be an app. There has to be something to, I mean, it's crazy. I, I, I feel your pain. I struggle. <laughs> I have a notebook next to me on, on my desk that has all the passwords encrypted, of course. Of course. On, on my desk so that I can look up whether it's Amazon or whoever I'm doing business with to see what password I used. And <laughs> what's crazy is we need to be changing those passwords. Oh. Yet your ID shield, you can actually <clears throat> Give them some of the retailers that you do business with, mm-hmm. and they'll help monitor those. And even when you become a victim, mm-hmm. they can help you sort all that out mm-hmm. and and change those um, issues that you need to get changed and back to protecting you and get your credit back to the way it was. You know, um, I, I think if I'm going to have to go and create a password for something, I think I'm doing the world a favor. Then... I create the password and I hit enter, and you know what it says to me? Sorry, it's been it's used. not. It's either <laughs> been used or it's not secure enough. You need to add numbers or symbols, or and I'm going really, and I'm starting to talk to this computer, and then they're saying my password's not good enough. But I said I just want credit for creating one. Uh-huh. It's crazy. Um, well, get prepared because, you know, as technology keeps getting stronger and stronger, yeah. you know, and what's available even right now is face recognition with your computers. And your computer's going to start recognize you by your face and so that you can get into some of those places easier. Uh-huh. Um, but with everything that they try and make easier and more convenient for us, Actually, the more vulnerable we become, right. you know. So, right. like our debit cards, you know, was easier. And, um, you know, there's just so many things that technology, whether it's using our cars, et cetera, to make things mm-hmm. easier just makes Big Brother bigger. And then when somebody taps into Big Brother, whether it's those chat rooms and, and, and cyberspace, it makes us more vulnerable. That's why we need to be protected. Okay, so... You walk into a Moore County business for the first time. Um, you've set up an appointment with a, a business owner, let's say 20 employees, mm-hmm. and it's local, even though you don't just work locally. Um, your presentation, when you go in to do a, your overview, mm-hmm. um, walk me through that just briefly. Okay. All right. Um, well, first thing is, you know, I want to be a good listener. And I first want to ask, you know, what kind of issues the the business owner is having? Mm-hmm. You know, what are their bumps, their bruises? What's taking up the most time? I want to learn from them okay. about their business. I want to learn a bit, a little bit about their employees, why they take time off. You know, how can we make them more productive? And then I want to get involved with asking more specific questions, such as, you know, what are they doing for any debt collection issues? You know, how much are they having to pay to get those debts recovered? You know, do they have um, a successful website? Mm-hmm. You know, do they have an HR department? Do they have an employee handbook? You know, all those things that, you know, you would expect a good business to be having, can we improve on those? You know, you know, what can we look at that would make their business more successful, run smoother, and save money, keep money in his pocket. So those are the things that we're going to go over, and then we can match up the right plan that Fran is part of Mm -hmm. through his Go Small Biz that can help develop that company. And so that's why I need to sit down there and talk with them and learn what's best for them, get a look at the demographics of their employees and how I can best serve their employees. And identity theft is such a huge thing within businesses. Mm -hmm. And if you have one employee that is out due to an identity theft issue, that's a bad problem for that employer. And most employers have already experienced employees that are struggling with identity theft issues, not to mention legal issues. I mean, legal issues aren't just divorces. You know, it's, it's credit issues. It's the next door neighbor. It's the HOA. It's, you know, um, bills are unfair. They can't get their car repaired. You know, just all kinds of things that we can help that employee with. Mm -hmm. And Fran's, um, Go Small Biz company offers, uh, mentoring, coaching, motivational, uh, videos is that part of the the package? Yes, it sure is. Okay. All of those things they get with their package membership, and so not only will they have direct access to Fran and see him on a regular basis and right. get coaching by some of the best 
corporations in the world. He'll have, you know, um, presidents of some of the largest companies in the country coaching you, the business owner, as well as the top people that can help you with your different departments, whether it's HR, accounting, uh, marketing, sales, those types of things you'll have direct as- access to as part of this membership. Um, as you have probably discovered, um, you're in a county loaded with entrepreneurs, yes, uh, independent business people. Um, there's something about um, Moore County that just sort of uh, creates a fertile environment for that. Um, and so you are, it's like a great testing ground for you, isn't it? <laughs> I'm real excited about it. Yes, I am. And, and actually coming from Atlanta and, and uh-huh. Columbus, Ohio, I'm used to working with really large corporations. And so this is new and I just love it. I'm so excited to have the opportunity to help the small business owner, yep. you know, the, the entrepreneur, because that's what makes, you know, this, this country great That's right. is the small business owner and I want to meet as many of them as possible right. because as of right now you know from now until the end of the year I am donating my profits back to the um, rescue animals of Moore County and you know just kind of going full circle giving back to the community and paying it forward to the things that draw that drew my husband and I here we're going to talk about that um uh, aspect of it in the third set. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is all things Moore County. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our final set. Um, we've been speaking about Legal Shield with Amelda Kaufman and earlier in the show with her uh, business partner, uh, well-known um, former NFL player, um, Fran Tarkenton. Um, if people want to contact Amelda directly, um, you can actually call her at her, um, her phone, 614-332-0070, or her website to learn more about Legal Shield, to learn more about Amilda, and to set up um, uh, an appointment. And that would be at acoffmangroup.com, www.acoffmangroup.com, uh, um, for maybe a, um, a casual, uh, maybe a cup of coffee presentation, at least to start. And as you said, I like what you said, you have to start by listening. You can't start by um, telling people what you do. You have to hear what they need to speak to other people's listening. That's correct. Right. Um, We ended the first set with Fran, and um, he said something that was very prophetic. You know, he said, you know, it's all about serving others and um, genuinely serving others. There's a difference, you know, in not paying lip service to, to doing what looks good, but to do it from your heart. And that will come back tenfold. Yes, and that's exactly where uh, my heart is, as well as my husband's. As I went back to the beginning of our conversation of why, one of the things that attracted us to the Sand Hills, and um, and we definitely want to mm-hmm. be part of this community. And this is yeah. a way that I feel that I can be part of this community by paying it forward through these fabulous services, so I can help the businesses and help the. Yeah. Animals of so Morgan. that's where that's where your heart is. You Absolutely. just mentioned you just mentioned your heart. Yes. Um, it's in servicing others, but serving others. But um, the issue here, why you're so concerned? Um, it, it, do we just refer to it as um, animal overpopulation? Yes, uh, uh, animal overpopulation as well as let's get real with each other. Owner irresponsibility too. Mm-hmm. You know of not containing their their furry family friends and you know not neutering or spaying when they should and 
And so a lot of these poor little sweet animals get lost, you know. They get scared on Fourth of July and run out, and then they can't find a home. Um, I recently just uh, found a lovely little hound that was showed up in my backyard with pure heat exhaustion. And, um, you know, it just my heart goes out to these animals, and there's just so many of them, and our rescue organizations are so inundated. Mm -hmm. And we have wonderful veterinarians here that are giving up their services, so Mm -hmm. I feel I can give up, you know, my, you know, profits to give back just like all these other people are giving back. And it's just uh, the circle of life, I guess you could say. We have um, we have so many um, nonprofit organizations. We have many charities in Moore County. It's a very giving community. But um, one of the hallmarks of Moore County are the is the independent spirit of a lot of people who want to volunteer, who want to give back, who want to mm-hmm. uh, mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes you just start something on your own as well. Um, we have a neighborhood citizen watch group that is geared almost solely to protecting animals when and they are very consistent with their emails uh, i should actually put you in touch with them um, pam pardis that's wonderful uh, do you know pam pardis uh gene and i'm going to introduce gene maples here in just a minute but i'll ask, before i introduce you again i don't know if you know pam uh, no, I'm afraid I don't. She, she's an activist in the community, as I would describe you, uh, and she's very passionate. She came from California, and there isn't a day that goes by that we don't get a notification from her, um, either a cat or a dog, um, if they're not microchipped, if they're, if they're, um, she wants everyone in the neighborhood to know the status of, um, of some of these lost animals. Um, and Jean, I, I didn't get a chance to formally introduce you, but Jean is one of the, uh, um, he, he's a, a, a very proactive Moore County citizen and advocate, and you're very passionate about a lot of things. And um, we first met um, all about the, the Mid Pines and the Pine Needles um, project a couple of years ago. Um, but you're, you have a strong affiliation with the Temple Theater, which we'll, we'll try to get to. But um, you also... Um, are very concerned about the um, the overpopulation of animals in Moore County. And how did you and Emilda happen to meet? Well, Bill, it's uh, it's amazing uh, how people are put together uh, in this life. And the reason I'm here today is because Emilda is the one that rescued uh, this little hound, yeah. a little female about eight months old. Yeah. And she was concerned, um, was referred to one of the rescue organizations. Yeah. The short version is I immediately adopted uh, this little girl. Okay. Uh, my third dog. Uh, and then there is Miss Kitty. Miss Kitty adopted us. And so I actually have four rescues in my house. Wow. And... Uh, People that don't have animals are missing so much in life uh, because of their unconditional love. Uh, right. And when we um, became acquainted, uh, we decided that it was possible for us to overlook all the negative, discouraging things mm-hmm. that uh, that are in people's minds about the overpopulation mm-hmm. and the the, re- the problems and the issues with the rescue organizations. Mm-hmm. And I have always said in business and in life, don't bring me problems, don't complain, bring me solutions. Mm-hmm. And so Amilda and I decided that there was a really simple way that we could make a small difference. Right. And that's all people need to do is don't get overwhelmed right. with the big picture. Find a niche. Find a way that you can help in some small way. And Amilda is using Legal Shield as her engine to, to get correct. from here to there, and that's important to, to let people know. What I found when I adopted Happy, uh-huh. The most, the happiest little puppy you ever saw. Uh She's a little, she looks like a little hound on stilts. Uh She's all legs and ears. Mm -hmm. And she is 
happy. Sounds delightfully neurotic. They well, yeah. It's like you know when when Amilda when Amilda uh, surrendered her to the to the to the veterinary hospital that she was told to go to. Yeah. They said, well, hey, we need a name. Who? What's the puppy's <clears throat> name? Mm-hmm. Happy came into her mind, and that is the dog's name to this day. Okay. What I did, what I found was that. When I got ready to take Happy home, right. I said, you know what? I said, I need to go ahead and just pay for her. I need to go ahead and pay her her bill here at the vet right. because she had had to have her surgery and so forth, you know, and all her vaccinations. And I paid the bill. And in doing so, what I found was that that particular rescue organization is like the others. They live with with debt. There was uh, there was an amazing amount uh, on their statement uh, at the vet. When I shared this with Amilda, she the, the light bulb came on. She said, "Hey, we can do something about this." Is there any way that you can, in a very um, uh, condensed way, quantify? Either the costs of what it takes to spay and neuter, or the um, the financial burden that the overpopulation puts on the county. Well, it depends to some extent on who does that. Now, this was a private veterinary practice. Yeah. Um, which uh, the you know, and we have uh, in the county, we have by the by my count, we have uh, I think sixteen uh, uh, veterinary clinics. Yep. Uh, of one of, well, of some nature, uh, 16 veterinary clinics. Uh, they are all cooperative and helpful in this sort of thing, but obviously they have to pay the rent, and right. so they would charge more. Sure. Uh, there are also the um, uh, the reduced cost services mm-hmm. uh, in the spay and neuter clinic that has become very very successful here uh, in in a multi county area. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there is some variability. Now in the case of Happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I paid her bill in its entirety. It mm-hmm. was three hundred and ten dollars for one dog. Jeez. For that, mm-hmm. uh, it's interesting to me that uh, the the little kittens that were the little kittens that were abandoned yeah. and then rescued over at the high school yeah. a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, those kittens, that those five kittens, uh, the figure that I heard, I believe, in print somewhere was that that was another five hundred dollars. Mm that some organization had to just inherit right. and then hope and pray that donors came forward to cover those sorts of things. That's the revolving sort of, of, of debt that these people live with, and that is the one little niche that Amilda and her product and I hope yeah. to be able to make people aware of that this, in a, in a very small way, will yeah. help the big picture. There are um, there are a lot of situations, in, especially in Southern Moore County, that go unnoticed, um, and they, it's not that they get brushed under the rug, but people aren't always fully aware of the the problem with the overpopulation and the expense, um, and these vets uh, they need money, uh, they need some because they're uh, carrying a lot of the burden, are they, are they not? Yes, they are. I mean, that's exactly what, um, you know, Jean was talking about. You know, somebody's got to pick up the tab for right. these furry children. Right. And, um, you know, a, a lot of people are feeling tapped out and, and yep. organizations are feeling tapped out around this. One of the things that I've noticed. And so through this program here, an employer and an entrepreneur or employees or individuals mm-hmm. can get something they need for their family, protection for their family, advice that they need for their family, get their wills done. You know, they've got teenage drivers. They need help with moving violations. So they can get something that they need, and by getting something they need and can help them, then in turn we can help give money back to these organizations that need money. You have a um, you have a, a great flyer. I'm assuming it's on your website. Um, and if if it's not it should be. <laughs> yes. Um, and I just I've been looking at it if you have you've been talking. A hundred and one reasons to use Legal Shield. <laughs> now I want to just read a couple of these because I think it's amazing. People these things happen to people all the time. A um, hundred and one reasons to use Legal Shield. Um, a merchant refuses to honor a guarantee. Uh, you have an accident driving your friend's boat. 
uh, you're cheated by a door-to-door salesman. Uh, a creditor tries illegal collection tactics. Um, you're scheduled to appear in small claims court. A hairdresser, this is crazy, a hairdresser damages your hair with harsh chemicals. Okay, so do we live in a litigious society? Okay, you need your lease agreement reviewed. Um, creditors threaten to take action against you for your ex-spouse's debts. That should resonate. Um, uh, unfortunately, it should. Um, you don't have a retirement savings plan. Um, you don't understand your health insurance plan uh, or the new legislation. A repairman charges more than a given estimate. Um, th- if people read, uh, your neighbor's dog bites your child. Stuff happens. Every day you wake up, stuff mm-hmm. happens. Uh, your bank sends a foreclosure notice after one house payment is late. Panic sets in. Mm-hmm. What do you do? If you had some knowledge, you could remain calm and focused and just proceed. Um, a bank reports bad credit activity unjustly, um, or your right to privacy has been invaded. It goes on and on and on. That's right. It's everyday life issues, and it's about living smarter and having access. You know, we always go to our buddy to ask, you know, certain questions. Advice, to, right. right. Well, let's now go to someone who is proficient in those areas to make the correct decisions for our lives. It's not about being overly aggressive or litigious. It's about knowing the right answers. Right. Um, the services that they re- – I, I don't know anything – like this service that's available here, but I do have to ask you a question with our um, attorney community. Mm -hmm. How do the local attorneys, how do they react, whether it's here or Mm -hmm. in Columbus, Ohio, how do they respond to a a service like this? I'm so glad you asked that question because it's a very important question. We actually bring business to the community. you know, the, initially their phone calls will go to what's called a provider uh-huh. law firm, similar uh-huh. to like your your health insurance. And then if you need a, an attorney right here in Moore County, as I have on a couple of occasions, they use a referral attorney right here in Moore County. So we're bringing business to Moore County or wherever that action happens. And then so we're supporting that. And then also, you know, a lot of attorneys don't even want to be handling some of the things that you mentioned, let's face it. So it's a win-win for everyone. A legal shield, um, you can call Emil de Kaufman directly at 614-332-0070 or go onto her website at acoffmangroup.com and Kaufman with a C. Um, welcome to Moore County, and um, thank you for um, – trying to pay it forward, and I am going to get you in touch with Pam Partis, uh, just another connection in the community. Thank you so much. And Jean Maples, I just wanted to wrap up with you. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk about the Temple Theater today, um, but hopefully in a few weeks we can for their upcoming season because that's something else you're very passionate about. We can certainly do that, Bill, and I appreciate that opportunity. As a matter of fact, I was at the theater uh, yep. uh, working with, uh, uh, with with Peggy Taphorn yesterday right. about some of our um, um, things in the uh, the upcoming season, yeah. uh, which begins in September. You, so you talk will, about a passionate lady, Peggy Taphorn. Will, she could have been Fran Tarkenton's daughter. We will look forward to doing that. Uh, Bill, the yes. one other thing I did want to Real share quick. with you here okay. is that uh, um, the cl- the clearinghouse for this information that I have here okay. uh, is Moore County Animal Services. Okay. Uh, the, there are, by their count, uh, then uh, in addition to the 16 veterinary hospitals, we also have 17 uh, rescue organizations okay. uh, in the county in one way, and I would encourage your listeners to uh, hook up with one and get involved. And if people want to call um, and they want to use a number, they can call the radio station. If they see anything they want to report at 910-692-7440 and here at the WEEB station. And any of your listeners can reach me uh, here at the radio station also. Gene Maples, thank you so much. Amilda, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Good luck. Um, you're going to do great. Thank you very much. Uh, I love passionate people. Everybody have a have a good week.